Welcome Scott everybody, or I should say welcome back. Today's video is gonna be all about learning the basics for the scapula controlled articular rotation. Now the scapula is an interesting joint because it sits between the shoulder and the spine and acts as this middleman. It's like an extra lever that would, you can disperse force and also generate force from. So the scapula acts as almost like an anchor for us to stabilize the shoulder around and help absorb load. And for us, the scapula doesn't have a set position. It needs to have freedom of movement. It's not a traditional joint. It is suspended in more soft tissue. So the only real limitation for most people is gonna be their connection and how well they practice it. So today we're gonna to work on exploring all of our available range in the scapula. All right, we have Kathy here, our, our awesome co-pilot. She's, <laughs> she's gonna help show us um, scapula cars before we practice it, okay? So we're gonna just do one side. It's actually better to do one side. You can do them double, but I think one side you get better concentration. She's gonna start by keeping, imagine that she has a seam on her pants and she's allowed to let her fingers go up and down, but she doesn't want them to move side to side. All right, so start with elevation. Protract, try to roll that scapula towards me. Bury that scapula in, in your shoulder into depression and then retract and then elevate again. So you have one or two more reps like that. Okay, so we're just moving that shoulder blade around and then go ahead and reverse that. Good, and keep hiking up and keep exploring. Cool, so that's a quick visual. Let's go ahead and get into it together. Keep your hand pinned to the ground. Pinned to the ground, pinned to your leg. <laughs> All right, I want you to keep your elbows straight. Start off by hiking up or shrugging. Elevation, go to protraction, try to drive your scapula, shoulder blade away from your spine. Depress down, as far down as you can, and then reverse and retract. And keep going that same direction. Try to find the independent motion from your shoulder blade. Your, your shoulder's gonna get a little bit involved, that's okay, but we really wanna make sure that the scapula is getting most of the motion. And now go ahead and reverse directions. Trying to keep the same speed too, right? Mm, that's a great point. Yeah, don't rush through any kind of um, disconnected movement, right? Try to keep it at the same speed the entire time, tracing out the biggest circle you can. Quick compensations to go through with that scap is pretty simple, but one of the things you're gonna see is a lot of elbow bend. So go ahead and start going through it. You start to see that elbow bend. That's something we want because we're just, again, isolating scap in the motion. The other thing you'll start to see is that the hand will move side to side. Well, when the hand goes back and forth, we're really getting rotation in the actual shoulder itself. That's not what we want because we're actually going to give the shoulder an opportunity to move later on. We just want to practice the scapular motion. The other one you'll see is that the hand might go out. Well, that's abduction. We don't want to do that either. You want to bring the shoulder to your ear, another ear to your shoulder when you're doing the elevation? Mm -hmm. You may see that people will replace retraction with extending their spine. Again, it's not something you want to do. She already talked about moving your ear, so definitely don't want to see the head go forward. Super important to practice. Once you understand this as well, you can start to really feel scapular movement in something like your push-ups, pull-ups, any kind of upper body exercises. Okay, now that we went over the scapula, the scapula actually helps stabilize and um, absorb force alongside with the shoulder. And the shoulder is gonna be our next car that we're gonna work on. We'll see you there.